Roger Scott Nichols, September 22, 1944 to April 9, 2011, was an American recording engineer, producer and inventor. Nichols is best known for his work with the group Steely Dan and John Denver. He was also the audio engineer for numerous major music acts including The Beach Boys, Stevie Wonder, Frank Zappa, Crosby Stills and Nash, Al Dimeola, Roseanne Cash, Roy Orbison, Cass Elliott, Placido Domingo, Gloria Estefan, Diana Ross, Bella Fleck and the Flecktones, Ricky Lee Jones, Kenny Loggins, Mark Knopfler, Eddie Murphy, Michael McDonald, James Taylor, and Toots Thielmans, among others. On February 11, 2012, Nichols was awarded a Special Merit, Technical Grammy Award, his eighth Grammy overall. In May 2010, Nichols was diagnosed with stage 4 pancreatic cancer. He died from the disease at his home, surrounded by his family, on April 9, 2011. In his subsequent New York Times obituary, Nichols was referred to in the headline as an artist among sound engineers. The Roger Nichols Recording Method, his long awaited guide to audio engineering, was released by Alfred Music Publishing on June 17, 2013. <laughs> Early life Roger Nichols was born in Oakland, California. His father was a U.S. Air Force B-47 pilot, as a result the Nichols family lived in various spots in the U.S. for the first 11 years of his life. In 1957 his family settled in Cucamonga, California, where Nichols attended high school. One of his classmates was Frank Zappa. Zappa would drop by Nichols' house to play guitar, and we would do multiple passes of guitars and bounce them together. On Nichols' first recording device, a reel-to-reel -reel tape deck using quarter-inch tape. He attended Oregon State University where he studied nuclear physics. From 1965 to 1968 he was a nuclear operator at the San Onofre Nuclear Generating Station a.k.a. Songs. <laughs> From nuclear operator to recording engineer Nichols and some friends created their own recording studio, Quantum Studios, in Torrance, California in 1965. The facility originally was a four-car garage, it was converted into a four-track studio to record high school bands. A hi-fi supply store, created as a side business by Nichols and his partners, brought in clients and contacts that led to recording commercials, with future stars Karen Carpenter and Larry Carlton performing on some of the spots. Another musician Nichols recorded in this era was the former Mouseketeer Cubby O'Brien, on the drums. Nichols also recorded Kenny Rogers, then with the first edition, the studio was expanded into a former post office and upgraded to 16 tracks, sales of recording equipment and machinery to ABC Records first recording studio led to a contact with Phil Kay, who was in charge of the facility. Nichols was hired in 1970 to maintain the equipment and do engineering work with Kay and Steve Barry. Some of the clients Nichols recorded at this time included John Phillips and Denny Doherty of the Mamas and the Puppers, the Grassroots, and Hamilton, Joe Frank and Reynolds. Topic: The Steely Dan Years. Topic: First Meeting. In 1971 Nichols met Gary Katz, newly hired at the ABC Dunhill label as a record producer. Walter Becker and Donald Fagan were also working at ABC as songwriters. One night Nichols was drafted, when no one else on the staff wanted to be involved, to stay and engineer a demo session that Becker and Fagan were holding to record their tunes for use by other artists. Nichols discovered he had a great deal in common with the then-unknown duo, including sharing a taste for impeccable audio quality. Nichols was asked to engineer their first record album in 1972, and he would wind up working with Katz, Becker and Fagan in recording the first, decade-long incarnation of the band that became known as Steely Dan. <laughs> Engineering the birth of Steely Dan 
As a result of working with Nichols, Becker and Fagan and producer Katz were determined to have him seated behind the recording console for the 1972 start of Studio Sessions their first album, Can't Buy a Thrill. This conflicted with Nichols' summer vacation, and the decision was made to postpone recording until Nichols returned, much to ABC president Jay Lasker's annoyance, due to the amount of money advanced to the fledgling band. Once begun, the process was exacting. Nichols later commented, We finished it in six months, which was quick for them. But even then their acceptance level was way above everyone else's. They never had the attitude of, it's getting late that's good enough, or, no one else will notice. Everything had to be as near perfect as technically and humanly possible. The album sold well and yielded two hit singles, ensuring Nichols would be tied to the band's fortunes. Nichols was involved in engineering every Steely Dan album. Topic. Nickname. The Immortal. Interviewed in 1993 for Metal Leg, the Steely Dan magazine, Nichols stated regarding his nickname that appears on many of his credits, They were trying to kill me. I was working on a Johnny Winter session on the weekends, with Steve Barry all day and with Steely Dan all night, so they had me going 24 hours a day. They tried running me into the ground, but it didn't work. Then there was the time when we were working at Cherokee Studios when two of the tape machines were grounded improperly and I touched both of the machines and everything shorted out. The faceplate on one of the machines was completely melted but I didn't feel a thing. They figured something weird was going on. Topic: <laughs> Innovations for Countdown to Ecstasy and The Hand. When Becker and Fagan expressed frustration during the band's second album Countdown to Ecstasy with the difficulty in acquiring a steady drum tempo, Nichols was forced to improvise. The track Show Biz Kids had proved especially challenging in regards to a steady beat. As quoted in Brian Sweet's biography of Steely Dan, Reelin' in the Years, Nichols recalled, it was just one of those tunes that that was so very difficult to play exactly in tempo, with every instrument in sync. There were no drum machines in those days, so we made a 24-track, 8-bars tape loop, which at 30 IPS was a considerable length of tape, trailed it out through the door into the studio, around a little idler which was set up on a camera tripod, back into the studio and then copied that to a second 24-track machine. Everything was on tape except the lead vocal and the lead guitar. It worked like a dream. The album's back cover photograph featured a photo of Steely Dan in the recording studio control room, and included Nichols' seemingly disembodied hand on the mixing console while he hid beneath it. <laughs> Steely Dan's studio-only years After the third Steely Dan album Pretzel Logic and the tour by the band in support of it, Steely Dan ceased touring and turned into a band that only performed on recordings. Nichols' duties became more diverse, and ranged from diagnosing a flaw on the master tape of the band's biggest selling single, Ricky Don't Lose That Number, a workman's gob of mustard on the tape was found by Nichols to be to blame, to helping to recover the sound on their fourth album, Katie Lied, which had been recorded at ABC Studios and had suffered when the master tape was processed through a faulty DBX noise reduction system while mixing. Topic. Grammy Awards with Steely Dan Nichols would win his initial three Grammy Awards Best Engineered Recording — Non-Classical for his late 70s early 80s — Meticulous Studio Work — with Steely Dan on the 1977 album Arja, which was his first Grammy, the hit single — FM — No Static at All and then for his engineering contributions to the 1980 release Gaucho. Nichols won three additional Grammys with Steely Dan, including the Notable Achievement Album of the Year for his sonic accomplishments on their comeback album, Two Against Nature, 2000. Topic. Inventions 
In 1978, Nichols pioneered the technique of digital drum replacement by inventing the Wendell sampling computer, which was used to provide some of the drum and percussion sounds on Steely Dan's album, Gaucho, notably the song Hey 19. This technology is now commonplace in music production around the world. He invented and produced a rubidium nuclear clock under his company name Digital Atomics. The purpose of the clock was to provide the accuracy of nuclear timekeeping to better synchronize digital recording equipment in the studio, but at a lower cost than the typical cesium clocks such as those used in military and aviation applications. As author Roger Nichols was a pro audio columnist and gear reviewer for many years at EQ, a professional audio magazine. He also wrote prose extensively, including material for master classroom use, which he intended to turn into a textbook on recording technique. He did not live to see the final publication of his works, the first of which, The Roger Nichols Recording Method, has been compiled and edited by his wife Conrad Reader and Mike Lawson for Alfred Music Publishing, under the oversight of Alfred CEO Ron Manis, who in early 2013 stated, We are so thrilled to have the opportunity to publish Roger's work. I can think of no better way to honor his memory and legacy than by making his unparalleled experience and knowledge available to the world." Reader stated, I am especially grateful to Ron Manis, Mike Lawson and the entire Alfred Publishing team for ensuring that a new generation will benefit from Roger's artistry and inventive brilliance in the recording studio by releasing the Roger Nichols recording method. Roger would also be thrilled about it, especially since Alfred CEO Ron Manis, was once his second engineer in the studio. Other activities Nichols lectured before numerous audiences, including as a guest lecturer for the Berkeley School of Music, University of Miami, and recording workshop. Nichols was also a scuba diving instructor, an avid photographer, and an airplane pilot, and was close friends and flying buddies with singer songwriter John Denver. Nichols engineered and produced albums for Denver over a nearly 20 year period, including the 1998 Children's Railroad Train album titled All Aboard which earned Denver his first Grammy, awarded posthumously. Nichols was on his way to California to fly with Denver in his new experimental Long EZ plane when he learned of the crash in which Denver was killed. Topic personal life He was married to writer, musician Conrad Reader with whom he had two daughters, Simsi and Ashley. Topic death. Nichols was diagnosed with stage 4 pancreatic cancer on May 29, 2010. In early 2011 he was reported to be fighting for his life. Nichols died on April 9, 2011, aged 66. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Grammy Awards. 1977 Best Engineer Non-Classical, Steely Dan Arger 1978, Best Engineer Non-Classical, Steely Dan FM, Soundtrack 1981, Best Engineer Non-Classical, Steely Dan Gaucho 1997 Producer, Best Children's Album, John Denver All Aboard 2000, Best Pop Vocal Album Steely Dan 2 Against Nature 2000 Album of the Year Steely Dan 2 Against Nature 2000 Best Engineer Non-Classical Steely Dan 2 Against Nature 2012 Special Merit – Technical Grammy Award for Contributions of Outstanding Technical Significance to the Recording Field in 2006 Nichols' work was formally recognized by the Recording Academy Grammys, Producers and Engineers Wing. <laughs> 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 Music 